Hello, I'm David Hughes. Welcome to Your Perfect Body, the podcast of the Esoteric Teaching Community. Today's selection is an essay entitled Desire, Lamentation, and Illusion. In material consciousness, we are always torn between desire and lamentation. We desire that which we do not have and lament for what we have lost. Tossed between desire and lamentation, we never have a moment's peace. This torment of material existence is due to the illusory conception that I am this body. Therefore, the first point of the esoteric teaching is that, no, we are not this body, we are spirit soul. If we can realize even this first point, then we immediately become free from desire and lamentation. We do not even know what our real desire is. Our real desire is for a perfect body. Everyone has a unique conception of what their perfect body would be, but this desire for a perfect body is the root of all other desires. A perfect body, however, is unattainable in the material existence, but in the spiritual existence it is our natural state and our birthright. Therefore, if we want to be happy, we must give up the fruitless effort to attain a perfect body by material means and embrace the spiritual path of life. In material life, perfect happiness is impossible to achieve. There is always some imperfection. The main imperfection of material existence is that everything material is temporary. So even if we attain some happiness or perfection, it is always slipping away. This is the material condition. Torn between desire and lamentation, caught in the illusion that the material body is the self. As soon as you accept the material body as the self, you then become subjected to desire and lamentation. Time always separates us from the objects that we crave. When they are in the future, we desire them. When they are in the past, we lament over them. Therefore, both desire and lamentation are due to separation by time. But in the spiritual realm, the influence of time is conspicuous by its absence. Everything in the spiritual existence is eternal and changeless. How do we know this? Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita, Those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non-existent there is no endurance, and of the existent there is no cessation. This seers have concluded by studying the nature of both. No, that which pervades the entire body is indestructible. No one is able to destroy the imperishable soul. In other words, temporary objects like the material body do not really exist because they are impermanent. Things that actually exist are eternal. The soul really exists because it is imperishable and indestructible. We can understand this by studying the nature of the soul. What pervades the entire body? It is consciousness. The consciousness we have today is the same as the consciousness we had in the past, even though our body and mind have changed. Bodily and mental changes result from the action of time on the material existence. But consciousness is unaffected by time, just as the vast sky is unaffected by the wind that blows through it. Sometimes the wind is calm and the weather is clear. At other times, the wind becomes violent and the sky is obscured by clouds. Nevertheless, the sky is always open and spacious, containing all, but never affected by its contents. Similarly, Consciousness is never affected by its contents. Good times and bad times come and go. 
We are at one time a helpless infant, at another a strong and independent adult. Then again we become crippled by old age and disease. But consciousness is always the same. We are the same persons that we were in childhood, and we will remain the same persons even unto the very end of our lives. The material body changes, but the soul, the consciousness, remains the same. So when the soul leaves the present body at the time of death, our consciousness also remains the same. Death is just another stage of the changes in the body due to the influence of time. So if the previous changes, from babyhood to youth to adulthood and old age, do not affect the soul, why should the final change of death affect our consciousness? It should not, and it does not. The contents of consciousness may change, but the nature of consciousness itself remains the same, fixed and unalterable. Nothing that happens to us in this temporary material world can really affect the soul or its primary symptom, consciousness. The esoteric teaching is the ancient science of consciousness taught in the Vedic literatures such as Bhagavad Gita, Vedanta Sutra, and others. If we simply follow this science, both in theory and in practice, then the desire and lamentation of material life cannot touch us. This is the great value of the esoteric teaching. So we are all influenced by desire and lamentation. This is the symptom of material consciousness, that we want what we don't have, and we lament over what we've lost. And this is the material condition. Uh, and that's why everyone in the material world is suffering. Didn't you ever think about desire as a form of suffering? It's a tension, a mental tension between what is and what we would like it to be. And they're never the same. We can never resolve this tension. We have to live always with this tension between what is and what could be, or what we have and what we want. This is uncomfortable. It doesn't allow us to have real peace. And then there's lamentation. Everything in this world is temporary. And the influence of time is to take away whatever we have. So, then when it's gone, if we lament over it, then again we are suffering. Oh, I had this money and then I lost it. Oh, now I need some more money. Desire and lamentation, lamentation and desire. On and on it goes. But this is not the real uh, position of consciousness or the soul. We made the example of the sky and how different kinds of weather blow through and occupy the sky, but then they go away and they're replaced by a different kind of weather. But the sky is always the same, wide open space. Similarly, consciousness sometimes is filled by pleasure, sometimes by anxiety, sometimes by pain, huh? desire, lamentation, illusion. But all these things go away and eventually the body itself goes away. And then the consciousness is left in its pristine state, unaffected by all the material experiences uh, of uh, whatever nature. So this uh, turbulence of the contents of the consciousness does not affect the consciousness itself. Uh, this kind of, of tension, torment of material existence. Oh, I want this. Oh, I don't have that. Oh, I had this and then I lost it and now he's gone. And so many, so many lamentations, desires, sufferings and so on. Mostly self-created, incidentally. Uh, all of these do not affect the consciousness. The consciousness is always open and experiencing through some kind of medium or senses, whether those senses are spiritual or material. 
Uh, the consciousness is always experiencing. Now we are identified with this material body, and so we are uh, desiring so many material things, even though this is not going to really help us. Actually, the things that come to us in this life are already foreordained.